Hey guys, it's Retro Head here, a word cracks no video. Today I'm off to Kingston to go to CEX and I have got some absolutely awesome pickups for the collection today. And if you like GameCube, you'll want to stick around and watch this video. And I'm also going to use this GameCube related video to give you an update on how the full GameCube set is going on. If you enjoyed the video, please like and please subscribe. But without further ado, let's go to Kingsland CEX. So here I am outside CEX in Kings Lynn. Now stay tuned to my channel Retrohead as there's actually a couple of other really good retro shops in Kings Lynn and also a few charity shops. So there will be some other Kings Lynn videos coming to the channel. But here I am in CEX filming in the glass cabinets. They have some really, really good stuff for a lot of consoles. But as you probably can tell from the title of the video, I stayed with the GameCube today because I have bought some incredible GameCube games to add to the collection. The GameCube is my favourite console of all time and the only one I can see myself going for a full set for, which we'll chat about later in the video. But I bought some amazing GameCube games from here. Let me know what you'd have grabbed in the comments down below. really impressed with their 3DS selection. You don't often see this many 3DS games. I didn't grab any today but it was awesome to see this many in one store. These were the GameCube games I wanted to buy, fingers crossed they're in good condition and also a heavy hitter in the glass case. So as you can see they have some awesome stuff in that CEX and I managed to grab some incredible GameCube games to add to the collection. So the first one, I'll start with the least exciting ones and move on to more exciting. So the first one is the Herbs Sims in the City. As you know I'm going for the GameCube full set so if I wasn't I probably would be grabbing titles like this but the GameCube is one of my favourite consoles of all time, so that is the only one I can really see myself going for a full set for. Um, the Herb Sims and City play this on PS2, um, and it's just another Sims game, it's not particularly special. This is very good condition, complete in the box, and I'm getting a bit more fussy with the GameCube games being complete now. Uh, let me know if you've played this one in the comments down below. Next up is a game that I don't see very often at all, and that is Beach Spikers Virtua Beach Volleyball on the GameCube. This was originally made by Sega, so you know it's probably going to be a pretty good game. And I never, ever really see this game out and about very often. Um, just looking at the back, it does look like a pretty good volleyball game. Um, it looks a little bit like Dead or Alive, to be honest. But um, looking forward to trying this one out. And this copy is in such good condition. I'll just show you inside. It literally looks brand new. This one was £12, which I think for a GameCube game that's pretty uncommon in this condition is a really good price. Let me know if you'd have grabbed this one in the comments down below. Next up we have a GameCube game that I hardly ever see, so I was really pleased to pick this one up. And that is Lost Kingdoms. This cost just £18 and I don't know overly much about this game, I've never ever played it. Um, I have searched up some gameplay of it and it looks really, really good. I'm not overly into RPGs, but um, this one is an RPG and I'm really, really looking forward to trying this one out. I'll read you a little bit on the back about this one. So it says, when a mysterious phenomenon threats the five kingdoms of this, there's a name of this place, and I'm not even going to try and say that. I'll put the word up on the screen. All hope lies in the hands of one person, Princess Kaita. With the help of her guardian creatures, she must travel the continent to discover and destroy the root of evil force. This game sounds absolutely awesome, and I'm really, really looking forward to playing this. And this one, again, is in really, really nice condition. I don't know if these were all taken in by, like, the same person, but every one of these games is complete and in such nice condition. So I was really, really pleased to find these. Next up is a game that I have played before on the PS2, and I've actually completed this game, and that is Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. 
I love, absolutely love Crash Bandicoot. I'm going for the GameCube full set. I'm about, I'm, I'm over 150 games at this point, and I haven't managed to add a Crash game to the collection yet. I think there is a couple more. I think they're both like racing ones. Um, but I was really, really pleased to see this one in CEX, and I thought twelve pounds was a really, really good price for it. I'll just show you inside as well. It is complete with a manual, and it's in really, really good condition. Uh, let me know what is your favourite Crash game because I know there's so many Crash Bandicoot games. I want to know which one is your favourite. And the final game is one that I've wanted for so, so long. This one was actually with manual price. So um, it's under the GameCube rarities, which is weird because they call them GameCube rarities. They do it for quite a few consoles, PS2 as well. But they're not rare. Like Mario Kart Double Dash is under GameCube rarities. And it's like the most common game. I think it's the second most common GameCube game. Which is weird. I think it's just the price, probably, that uh, determines whether it's a rarity or not. But they're pricing these rarity games, even though they're not actually rare games. But I don't know. Anyway, and that is Pikmin 2. This one was £45. I think it's only 40 without the manual. So I was really pleased to pay a five or more to get it with the manual. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, to be fair. Um, and inside, the condition of this one is so, so good. And I'm so pleased to have one in this good a condition. The manual has got no creases or marks at all on it. And it also comes with its Pikmin 2 VIP points, which are unscratched. Which for a game that's £45, to me, is pretty important that it sort of comes with all that stuff. Because I'm not going to pay £45 if it's not in good condition. Uh, played the original Pikmin on GameCube and absolutely loved it. I absolutely love the Pikmin games. Played the Wii U and the Switch version as well. And I'm really looking forward to playing Pikmin 2. Let me know if this is a particularly good Pikmin game because I just, I'm just i so pleased to have this in the collection and I cannot wait to try it out. So there we have it then, another five GameCube games going into the collection and I'm so pleased with all of these. And this is one of these rare cases with CEX that obviously uh, one of these was priced with manual but the other ones weren't. But luckily all the ones that I wanted in that CEX were complete and in really good condition. Which is a really, really good, like really, really good because you don't often get that. Some of them are missing manuals or the artwork's a bit faded, but got really lucky with CEX today. So I also wanted to use this kind of GameCube video to give you an update on my uh, full set. So um, I'm doing really, really well, but there, I've never really said this on camera before. There's one game that puts me off going for the full set. And if you know anything about GameCube, you'll probably know what it is. I'll stand aside, put a screenshot in. Gadget Racers on the GameCube is like an £800 game. Which is insane, and CEX never have this game in stock. And that is the only game that puts me off. I don't mind paying for these games and saving up and waiting a long time to pick them up, but £800 for Gadget Racers. And I'm going to put some gameplay in of it now. It does not look very good at all. I like my racing games, but to me, if you if I didn't know the price of this game, I'd say this is worth about a tenner on the GameCube. Not the price that it's warranting now, it's just absolutely crazy. That is the one game that puts me off going for the full set. Like I've already said, I don't mind spending money on these games. There's plenty of games that are two or three hundred pound plus, but they actually look like good games. This Gadget Racers does not look like a very good game, and if I ever want to get it at some point, I'm going to have to pay close to a thousand pounds for it. But an update on the existing collection. I'm doing really well with the Mario games. All I need now is Mario Baseball and Mario Party far, uh, no, 6 and 7 I need. I would kind of like to get them in the big box with the microphones, but... If I see him for a good price without that, I don't need to have it in the box. Um, but I'm doing really, really well. I, the only thing I haven't got yet is any Zeldas, which is a real shame. I hope to change that soon. Um, I went to a CX not long ago looking to buy the Wind Waker, but it didn't have the manual. And I was like, oh, so annoying. But um, yeah, so I need to get some more of the Zeldas. But apart from that, with the Mario's doing really well. Obviously, going for the full set means I want to get every UK PAL GameCube game. But obviously, that's not going to happen for... Years and years and years and years, like, that's going to be a long, long way off. But I want you to let me know, what sort of hidden gems are there on the GameCube? Ones that I don't know or haven't got that, that I need to try out, because I want to play every GameCube game would be really cool, but I know I, I know it's probably going to take 30 plus years to get the full GameCube set, but I want you to let me know, what games do I need to try out first on the GameCube? So what ones do I need to be playing, and what ones do I need to pick up next? Thanks for watching this video, if you did enjoy, please like, please subscribe, and let me know, what was your favourite pick up of the day? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!